Hey guys, Susie here from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. Welcome to my 36, 37 week pregnancy update. I want to start this video in a different way this week because I feel like this video is a little bit different. What I normally say in all my pregnancy update videos is that unlike a lot of YouTubers, I don't really show a whole lot of products and things. Um, mainly because this is my second pregnancy and I haven't really bought anything. I'm just not like a big consumer. Um, but I realized last week that we literally had nothing for the baby. So um, this week my car seat came in. Um, we got a baby swing. Um, our bassinet and like a few little odds and ends and I am going to show you what I got. Now the way I kind of like to do things is I like to use secondhand items. So some of the stuff that I show in this video is brand new like the baby's car seat for example um, but the bassinet that I bought I bought the halo swivel bassinet and they're a little bit pricey so I actually ended up buying that from a nurse that my husband and I work with and we got it for about half price with the infant insert so I'm really excited to show you guys a few things I feel really good today um, but I'm very short of breath but I have a lot of energy so that's kind of weird so anyway in today's video I'm going to talk about the baby's development I'm going to talk about the doctor's appointment that I had my symptoms and I'm going to do a little show and tell and another part of the show and tell part is that I'm going to show you guys my nursery and just like a little quick video of my son's new toddler bedroom. So there's a lot to cover today, um, but we're gonna try to get through it as quickly as possible. Let's start with symptoms for a change. So I am getting close to being 38 weeks pregnant now and my symptoms, I don't really have any new symptoms, but I have some symptoms that are like worse and some symptoms that are kind of going away. I'm going to talk about those. So the worst symptom that I have right now is that the baby is in a position where his foot or feet are pressing on my rib cage at all times. So I have sore ribs on this side all the time. Sometimes it is so bad that I'm literally like pacing around my house and trying to like push his foot back in. My ribs actually feel like they're bruised and I remember having the same thing with Wilson and I remember wondering like, is his foot stuck in my ribs? Like, is there gonna be something wrong with his foot when he is born? But um, there wasn't, uh, but I just, it just hurts a lot. So that's like my number one discomfort. The baby hasn't really dropped anymore. Although my doctor said at my last appointment, um, which was yesterday, which I'm gonna talk all about, but that he is head down and he is in a good position. He's not like engaged or anything like that at this point, but he is perfectly head down. Um, and his face is facing my tailbone, which is uh, the way the baby should be and hopefully he'll stay that way. But anyway, lots of pain. Um, my belly still gets super hard by the end of the day. So after eating and moving around and all that kind of stuff, my belly gets super hard to the point that like standing up, sitting down, sitting in my car, like shifting from side to side in bed, all of that stuff is just really hard. I tried to get a bath yesterday and like it's so, di I'm kind of sitting on an angle right now at the bottom of my son's unmade bed, <laughs> but I'm sitting on an angle now. For me to sit at a 45 degree angle is really, really uncomfortable. So like sitting up in the tub, uh, it wasn't enjoyable. Um, and so I ended up getting out, but I still have been getting like Epsom salts baths and just kind of like laying on my side um, and and yeah that seems to help that a little bit but just like general discomfort and feeling tight and like that pain in my ribs those are my main symptoms right now another symptom so I talked about like cervical mucus a couple of times and I know that this is TMI um, but if you are watching this and you're pregnant this is the kind of stuff that you want to know about so at about 36 and a half weeks 
Um, last week I said it was completely normal, like I didn't have an increase or anything like that. At about 36 and a half weeks, I started having like and again, this is kind of gross, but I'd have like blobs of it come out in the toilet when I would go to pee. Um, and when you're pregnant, you're kind of looking for stuff like that because I'm kind of waiting to see if pieces of my mucus plug come out. So um, I don't think it is my mucus plug. I just think that I have like an increase in cervical mucus, which is totally normal. Um, and it's kind of your body getting ready, you know, for your baby to come. So no sign of a mucus plug yet. When I was pregnant the first time, um, the day that I had my son, my mucus plug came out and it was like in one solid round piece. Like it looked like a hockey puck. Um, and it was like clear with red in it. So I knew exactly what it was. Um, some people say that it comes out in little pieces, um, but I haven't seen anything like that. One of my symptoms that I have been having is that I have been itchy all the time. And my husband was at Chopper's Drug Mart the other night and he bought me this Aveeno cream. I couldn't even tell you what the active ingredient is in it, but it's just a different one than I've ever tried before. It's like Aveeno Overnight Itch Relief and it's um, it's red, like the, leather, the leathering. <laughs> the lettering on it is red and it completely cured my itchiness at night. So I put that on at night and it has been a lifesaver. Like he got up and went to work before me the other morning and I sent him like 10 text messages just being like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because if you are itchy every single night going to bed and then all of a sudden that goes away, it's friggin' awesome. My heartburn's gone, which is funny because the baby is not dropped. Um, but for whatever reason, I don't have heartburn and I'm not complaining about that at all. Last video, I talked about having period cramping at night uh, and I ended up having that for about, you know, a week to 10 days in a row and now that's completely gone. And I am gonna talk about my doctor's appointment very specifically in a minute, but my doctor just said it was probably, you know, the baby moving downward in my pelvis and now that he's there and he's comfortable, I'm not having those cramps anymore. I'm still getting up to pee all the time in the middle of the night. Um, it hasn't gotten any better or any worse, but it's just still there. I still don't have any stretch marks, which is good. Um, I am 180 pounds um, and I did have a doctor's appointment yesterday and I was 180 pounds at my last doctor's appointment. So in total, I gained about, oh my God, I'm trying to do math here, 35 pounds for my pregnancy. I'm totally okay with that, that's fine. I'm not like a super light, thin person anyway. Like I'm, I think I'm in good shape, but I'm more of like a solid, more muscular person. Like I have muscular legs and things like that. Even when I competed and I like dyed it down until my face was like this, and like you could see every vein in my body, I was still almost 140 pounds. So um, being 180 pounds, don't knock a tick off me. I think that's it for my symptoms. I'm getting like anxious now and I'm kind of like on baby watch now. So I'm just waiting and kind of like analyzing every little cramp and everything that happens, just kind of waiting for any signs that the baby's coming. But I'm not, I remember with Wilson being like so anxious that I was like in tears and frustrated um, at this point because I just wanted to, him to be here so bad and I found like the last few weeks excruciating But I'm not I'm in a pretty good mindset. So that's good The last thing that I want to talk about is that uh, and this is kind of a symptom not of pregnancy But I just wanted to bring this up on my channel because um, it's probably something that a lot of you guys maybe suffer from or know somebody that suffers from this and you don't really know what it is so one thing that has been bothering me the last probably four or five weeks is can you see like I have almost like a red cracked area on the corner of my mouth and I have it on this side as well. You just can't see it as much. So what that is, it's called angular chelitis or like an angular dermatitis. Um, and it's very common and people are susceptible to it if they are taking Accutane, um, different types of steroids, Immunosuppressants. <laughs> so cute, he's singing. I'm gonna bring him in here in a minute. But anyway, back to my mouth. So my mouth has been very broken out. 
it's not the same as the herpes simplex virus, which unfortunately I have that too. So I do get cold sores. Luckily, I only get usually one like every three to five years. It's very rare that I get one. Um, but what it is, is like when your immune system is depressed or suppressed, or you have like a B12 deficiency, um, or if you have a zinc <laughs> deficiency, you can get either like a little bacterial or fungal or combination um, infection in the corners of your mouth. I used to get it a lot when I had braces because what would happen would be that I would go to my orthodontist, my mouth would be stretched wide open to have some sort of a procedure done, my lips would crack, and because I'm susceptible to it, um, it would flare up. And if you have it, you know that once it flares up, it's really hard to treat. So I've been taking vitamins, um, and I've been doing a combination of like a hydrocortisone um, cream and they suggest that you put like an antifungal cream on it once a day and an antibacterial cream on it. So I am trying to get rid of it, but it's, it's very painful and it just, I just find it's ugly. Like I'm just not a big fan of that. But anyway, if any of you guys have like, like a sure fire cure or a way that you treat yours, please leave it in the comment section below because it's been, it's been a few months now that it's been flared up and it is driving me nuts. I'm gonna talk about the baby's development last in this video, which I don't normally do, but um, there's not really a whole lot going on with him right now, new anyway, so I'm gonna talk about my doctor's appointment. So I see my doctor every week now and my appointment yesterday was a really good appointment. Um, I really like my doctor a lot and so I look forward to seeing her. Anyway, my blood pressure was perfect again, which is awesome because it's funny. When I had my son, I was in amazing cardiovascular shape. I was exercising all the time and eating way better. And at the end of my pregnancy, like the last month or month and a half, my pressure was way up and I was full of fluid. Um, so my pressure and everything is normal this time, which is great. And I have very little swelling in my hands and feet. The other day I woke up and my face and my lips were really puffy. I actually shot a hair video that day. Um, what? You have to pee? Yeah. Okay, do you want to come on camera for a minute? Yeah. And then we'll go pee. Look, can you say hi? Hi. Okay, what else about my appointment? So I had my group B strep swab. Um, so basically she swabbed my vagina and my butt. Um, just to check for group B strep, which is a bacteria that all of us have. But if it is, if the colonization is high, when you're about to give birth, they give you an antibiotic. Um, I'm not gonna get into too much detail about that, but in my last pregnancy, I was group B strep positive. So I did have to have the antibiotics, but in this pregnancy, I may or may not be. It is different, um, your body has different amounts of the bacteria, like it fluctuates throughout the year or whatever. So um, I'm, I'll just wait to find out if I'm positive. And if I am, not worried about it. If I'm not, not worried about it. Another thing about my appointment that was good was that, and again, this is so TMI, but I just like to share these types of things in case you're going through the same type of thing. So I noticed I had a, a lot of bladder infections last year, like when I was trying to get pregnant, like really bad, like so bad that my urethra was all swollen. Um, and I had a bunch of yeast infections all at the same time. Like I just had a lot going on down there. And so um, I had a couple of periods of times when I had a lot of swelling down there. And when I had swelling, I noticed that I almost had like it looked like a little growth inside the opening of my vagina. Guys, this is so <laughs> TMI, but it was just like a lump of kind of like tissue that stuck out. Like if this is my badge, like down here, like in a weird spot, like not related to any anatomical structures that I can think of. Um, and then once everything cleared up, it kind of went away. So I just thought, oh, it was swelling or whatever. So anyway, um, two weeks ago, I went to try to like groom myself down there and I had a mirror um, and I looked down there and it was back and it just looked a lot bigger. So 
I googled stuff and I kind of thought that it was some kind of like a cyst or like an overgrowth of tissue or something. I didn't automatically think like, oh, it's cancerous or it's anything bad. I really didn't. I didn't like having it there, um, but it didn't cause me any pain. It wasn't red. It was like the same color as all the tissue surrounding it. Um, anyway, I don't know why I'm telling this story because I have a good outcome and I always encourage that if you like see anything abnormal on your body, you show your doctor. Don't ever say like, oh, well that girl on YouTube had a lump and there's nothing wrong with it. So I'm not going to get it checked out. I'm not saying that. But anyway, so I had this lump. So when she was doing my swab, I explained to her exactly what it looked like and I wanted her to have a look at it and tell me if I should be referred to somebody else like to check it out or whatever and she looked and she said that basically it was part of like my hymenal ring or my regular vaginal tissue that sometimes during childbirth that kind of gets for lack of better words like kind of blown apart and now that I'm pregnant and there's swelling down there and there's a lot of pressure down there, it's just kind of like pushing everything forward and that's kind of sticking out. So she said that I can definitely have it like surgically removed um, and stitched a little bit. Even she said maybe when I have my son, depending on if I have tearing and stuff down there, she can correct that a little bit. But she said that um, it's not a lump, it's just part of my regular tissue down there and that she will do something to kind of fix it up a little bit. So I was really happy about that. The other thing that I was happy about, other than the fact that just things seem to be going well, I'm measuring perfectly um, and the baby seems healthy, like he was moving around a ton um, while I was there. But the other thing that made me happy was like just two little things that she said. I feel like sometimes doctors don't realize how like you just hang on every word they say and it's kind of nice to get some encouragement. So two things that she said that were kind of nice were um, when I laid down, like this baby's so head down and his back is right where it's supposed to be, like right in the front of my belly. <clears throat> and she said, it's funny how differently you're carrying this baby. Because when I was pregnant with Wilson, he was totally sideways the whole time, like head on one side, feet on this side, and my belly was flat. Um, and now Hank, his back is kind of sticking out in the front and he was just moving around and she said, um, it's funny how, you know, differently you can carry two different babies. And she was just commenting on how he's in a good position. And she said, and it, sometimes I like to think about, she said, how your baby in your belly right now, how they already have a totally different personality, um, than your first baby. So like, that was kind of nice to think about how. Hank is like his own little guy and he has his own personality. Um, that was kind of nice. And then the other thing that she said that made me be like, oh, I'm on the home stretch was um, at the end of my appointment, she said, okay, your appointment is Wednesday next week, you know, if you make it to that appointment. So we kind of laughed and hopefully I make it to that appointment. I would like to be at least 39 weeks pregnant. Mom, I'd like to, yeah. I just got down the basement again twice. No, you're not allowed to go down the basement by yourself. Do you want me to come with you? No, I just... No, I'm coming with you. So let's talk about the baby a little bit finally. I mean, there's not a whole lot to show, but I'll just tell you what it says on the app. So if you're 36 weeks pregnant, it says the baby is approximately 19.13 inches and 6.3 pounds. Um, and if you are 37 weeks pregnant, the baby is 19.61 inches and 6.8 pounds. And again, that's like an average. So the average 36 week baby to 37 week baby is between six and seven pounds, which is crazy to me. Um, so right now for this week, there's the picture of the baby and there is the scale size. So he's really getting big. And like I said, I can totally tell because his feet are just, crushing my ribs. And I only have a short torso, so there's really not a lot of room in there. But anyway, there's the baby, and let's see what it says about the baby. As your baby skull is still soft to allow for the trip through your birth canal, some of the tiny bones in his body won't fuse together until after birth. At this point, your little one is ingesting a lot of amniotic fluid, which is resulting 
in the buildup of meconium, the first bowel movement that he will have after birth. Your baby's tiny fingernails continue to grow, but they are soft inside your uterus. When your baby is born, you may want to cut them, but you should wait a few weeks to avoid damaging baby's soft nails and delicate skin. Your baby is gaining about one ounce every day at this stage, and the lubricant or surf surfactant that will keep the lungs from sticking together during breathing is being readily produced. So he's getting ready. He's almost ready to come out. He's just plumping up and his lungs are getting all fired up. My video. I don't know if I ever showed you guys this thing. Wilson has a little bald spot and he was born with that and it is adorable. Where's your nose? Where's your eyes? Here. <laughs> Where's your teeth? Hey. <laughs> and where's your teeth? You have the cutest teeth. And where's your tongue? And where's lips? And where's your nose? And where's your finger? And where's your eye? You're grilling me. Where's your hair? Right here. What do you think of mommy's hair today? Do you think it looks pretty? And where's pretty? your dress? I don't have a dress on. Yes, you do. Oh, no, it's a shirt. Oh. Show and tell time. So, um, I've had a delivery truck here like every day for the last week, which is kind of great because, again, I had nothing prepared for the baby. So, the first two things that I ordered on Amazon that I just want to show you guys, and I'll list them in the description box below, is I bought this Phillips Bikini Genie. Um, I talked about how much trouble I had, like, with grooming. This was $15 and it didn't have the best ratings, but I just needed something. Um, and I bought this and I actually use this already. So this is just a battery powered handheld little personal groomer. Um, and it says that it's for your bikini line, but this is not a shaver. This is a trimmer. So I mean, I don't want to be completely bald down there or anything like that. I just know I've kind of let myself go for long enough that I just felt like I just felt like I needed a little trim. So this worked awesome. I'm very happy with this. I mean, it might not last me forever and I didn't expect it to shave the hair. Um, I just wanted it to trim so that everything is like super super short and like clean down there so i really really liked this for 15 bucks and then i just got these nursing pads in the mail too i ordered these from amazon these are just like the lansano nursing pads they're the same ones i used when i had wilson i did have a lot of leakage um when i first started breastfeeding and in the hospital so i just wanted to have a box of these and I could have went to the store and bought them, but I was buying the razor anyway, which was a necessity. <laughs> um, so I ordered some of these. Big stuff. So for the big stuff, we ordered a car seat off Amazon. Um, and I'm going to show you that. It was a very specific car seat because I have a Bugaboo stroller, which is a super way too expensive stroller. But I bought it on Kijiji like... It was like six years old and the person used it for three kids or something like that. So it was well used. I bought it off Kijiji and there's only a certain few. Oh, my computer. Oh, you have your computer. Awesome. Do you want to come up on the bed? Oh, sure. Okay. So there's my infant car seat. It's the Maxi Cozy Myco 30. And I snapped it onto um, my stroller base just to kind of show you guys. So again, my stroller is called a Bugaboo Chameleon. Um, and it's a very expensive stroller, but I bought it very used, so I got it for a good price. Um, and this is one of the car seats that is compatible with it. I had to buy these little attachments, um, and I did with my last car seat as well, but I just love my stroller so much. It's just a base that is like feather light and folds up so easily and fits in the trunk of my tiny car. Um, I'm very happy with it. So we got that car seat and two bases. Um, and we bought them as part of a warehouse open box sale on Amazon. So it was a really good price. And here's my swing. And this is the swing that I wanted. My parents bought us this. This is called the Fisher Price Snugga Puppy. I'm going to turn it on. And these are about 150 bucks um, at Walmart. I had the same one with Wilson and I ended up like passing it on to somebody else but it has a mobile that spins and it also plays music 
I'll take the bear out so you can see it. That's Wilson's bear. So that's our swing and I highly recommend it. Like I said, I've had it before and I absolutely love it. Perfect timing. Um, somebody just showed up to drop off our bassinet, so it's just sitting on top of the change table right now. I don't have it put together, but this is the Halo Swivel Bassinet, and I really liked the look of this one, um, but I just bought this second hand from somebody I know, so one of the nurses that my husband and I work with just had a baby, and she was selling this, and I got it for almost half price, so that is like a score because I find these are a little bit overpriced. Um, but I will leave all the information in the description box below and I will let you guys know um, I'll show it to you again when it's put together and here is Wilson's new big boy bedroom It's not a great big room, but it's all he needs all of his toys are either in the living room or downstairs uh, Here are the art prints that I got from little splashes of color They were gifted to me by one of my subscribers and I will definitely leave all of the information about these um, in the description box below because I love them. Got the sheets in that from Walmart. Um, that's our backyard part of it. And we just got this dresser. He usually has all of his monster trucks like lined up on the shelf there. He does have a TV in his room. Um, there's his view. <laughs> and here is the nursery and that bookshelf needs to be cleaned off. Um, <laughs> Uh, so it's not a hundred percent complete in here, but there's our crib Same crib that we have with Wilson. It was given to us by one of the surgeons that we work with and it's like beautiful and solid wood and Our change table the swing which will most likely be in the living room um, This print is going to go in Wilson's room and you're gonna see in a minute that it like matches perfectly But here's our little dresser got like the little airplane theme every single drawer is full of baby stuff like I washed all of this stuff already um, and I'm just so excited this was one of Wilson's sweatshirts when he was tiny that was like one of my favorite things this is hard to see because of the lighting but that's an art print uh, actually it's not a print I'm lying that's a piece of art we had done of our dog Kyle by a local artist who is a friend of mine and it's Mommy. made out of magazine clippings. Mommy. Yes, buddy? Mommy! Yeah! I saw a little monster truck! Where? Baby one. I hope you liked this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. You can give it a big old thumbs down if you didn't like it. Look, <laughs> subscribe to my channel and I will see you very soon, hopefully, in my next video. Bye.